Hi guys, first vlog of 2020. Simon, welcome to the new year. How are you? Yeah, yeah terrific. Yeah. Terrific. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Nice blue jumper. Good Thank start. You very much. <laughs> um, so today we're talking about growing a team of SDRs within a tech company. Obviously, one of the challenges is feeding the beast, growing that team of SDRs. You have your post Series A or B funding. You know you've got to scale. You've got to build that outbound team and. Um, we spend a lot of t time talking to people who have that challenge and seeing the same challenges over and over again at the moment, aren't we? So, yeah. Talk me through your experience. What are you seeing in the market? What are the biggest challenges with growing a team of SDRs? Culture. Yeah. Mm. I think at the moment it's culture because you, you, get, you get your funding, you've, built, you've spent ages building your product, you know it works, you think, you haven't quite taken it to the market, you've got to take that punt, you've got to go out and get reassurance and um, feedback. So you need to get it sold through as many yeah. people as possible. Um, so there's pressure, there's a bit of panic, you hire, you're onboarding, and then you've suddenly got people into your sales team. And you haven't necessarily, or the, the leaders haven't really got time to train them up, to onboard them, to build that culture, but you're expected to go and get mm. the sales. And that's where I'm finding at the moment is um, a lot of people are coming to us because they're just saying it's so hard to build that culture. Mm. That sort of high fives, incentives, holidays, um, all the reasons to get up in the morning and sell a product. It's just very hard when they're isolated. Yeah. So yeah. the first, second, third team member to come on board, it's hard to get that that culture. Um, so that's where I'm thinking. That, well, that's why I'm hearing that people are coming mm. to say, "I've just I just need to plug it in, or I need mm. to A/B test our sales yeah. team. I've got no benchmark about what's good. I don't know if it's the product that's not good or if it's yeah. the salespeople. Yeah. Um, can you can I just send it to market with you guys?" Yeah and at least A-B test it with myself. And of course there's a lot of pressure. In the SaaS market, people are getting funded, there's an expectation to scale yeah. and to scale quickly, and the default setting is let's throw numbers at it, and we're seeing people have process issues, um, so it's great to have your first two or three people, that's yeah. fine, that's one challenge, so you know, uh, you know, pre-revenue or Series A, but if you're getting into Series B, maybe you've got a team of five or six, and there's an expectation for you to scale that to 12 or 15 or 20, mm -hmm then suddenly there's a new challenge which is not just about building a culture but keeping that culture working as it changes because you can't have a, an outbound team of SDRs at three or four or five people and keep the same culture as you grow to 20. You're going to have people come in and leave because they're not right. You're going to have people um, come in and, and not perform. You're going to have people um, come and want to be promoted if they do well very quickly because they know you're funded, they know that they're, they're ahead of the pack. And all of these are challenges that will change the culture as you grow from Series A to Series B and, and so on and so forth. What are the things that SaaS companies can be doing to, to, to combat those challenges? Um, just really putting some procedures in place. Mm. I mean, we're all set up here, aren't we, for HR issues. We deal with it. We know that people come and go. Mm. Um, I, I just think, get... Yeah, Get people, over, get staff over who are working in your area. It's yeah. very tempting to go to another company that's doing another product and say, "Well, well, there, you know, we've got some money. We can throw some money at a top salesperson." But if they're not selling mm. in your environment, um, yeah. it's, you're going to have to onboard them, train them. Mm. Um, one of the tips is go to other startups as well, because sometimes when you hire in from the bigger companies, they have their support mechanisms there. Yeah, they to they're spoiled it, in yeah. a way. Um, so you bring them over, and the first thing they do is, right, who's organising my leads for me? Where are my BDMs? Yeah. Where, where are my, uh, where's my support? And of course you're not, you're in a startup. Yeah. So um, it's just getting that, I suppose, in the interviewing and onboarding, making it very clear that it's a startup for a reason. Mm. Um, we need you to really dig, it, dig in and, um, and come on board and, and not be flattered by whoever's selling yeah. so much in the bigger companies yeah. because they have a different environment yeah. that they're working in. One of the challenges I keep hearing about is SaaS companies fishing in the same pool, uh, same pool or same pond, yeah. I should say, for SDRs. So there's a hell of a lot of competitiveness in the space. Yeah. Um, people are job hopping. They're moving yeah. around a lot. They're thinking about what can I do in six months and 12 months' time to progress rather than in two years, three years. They want movement faster. And that's hard to keep up with. And then somebody will offer five grand extra and three grand extra and so on and so forth. And all of a sudden you're paying, I heard something in the market ridiculous, like 50, 60 grand for an SDR basic, which is just nonsensical. It can't work long term. Now obviously scale is important. We want to build revenue, but at some point profitability is going to come into, into the, the equation as well. 
what should companies be looking to do to make sure they stand out in that market that they're attracting good SDRs and they're not going off to, to other, other SaaS companies? Culture. Mm. Um, Back to culture. Yeah, yeah, we just did a webinar, haven't we, on purpose and the reason that people stay at, mm. and stay with companies is far more than a pay grade. Mm. But if you are staying just for that five grand, there is something probably yeah. wrong there. Yeah. And they're looking to leave anyway. Um, we know here that there's a culture from everything from well-being to incentives to holidays. Mm. To, there's lots of other reasons why they get up and we know yeah. the teams really like coming to work to mm. be with each other and they all mix socially as well outside of work. So I'd definitely say that um, it's becoming very obvious now that if you look at LinkedIn and some of the, all the promotions and the videos that these top leaders are doing mm. and all the keynotes that they're doing around the on the scene, yeah, we know from our SaaS growth and yeah. sales confidence when we go there, the leaders aren't going up and doing a sales pitch of their products, the leaders are going up and doing a sales pitch for them, yeah. they're saying how they value staff, whether it be mental health, flexi work and everything else, and, and they've suddenly got these, I hate to say millennials, mm. you've got these employees for any age looking to move companies yeah. if they are, I mean it's tempting and how to keep millennials and how to keep people happy is becoming mm as important, yeah. if not far more important than that extra yeah. five grand. I also think there's um, an element of giving them the right tools. So you touch on people coming from more established um, organisations and going into a startup environment. Yeah. People want the right tools and they expect the right tech stack, for example. Yeah. And if you've got that in place, it's so much easier for people to succeed and do well and therefore they stay, versus coming in and everything's a bit higgledy piggledy and, and, and a bit of a mess. Although it's okay to be a startup. I think you've got to be smart in the way that you present that to people and you've got to make sure that, okay, there might be some gaps, but I've got, I'm giving you the right tools, I'm giving you access to a good sales enablement platform, I'm giving you access to good data, I'm giving you access to, to the right sort of tech stack to be able to do your job and deliver because otherwise I'm looking at that option, that option, that option, that option, they've got it in play, they're paying three, four, ten grand more on a basic as well suddenly it's very easy to jump and in a competitive market where everybody's looking for another five, three, ten, 20 SDRs, why wouldn't I move if I've got a better tech stack, better, better um, ability to do well and I can get paid more? So culture is key, but actually the, the tangible stuff of helping you to do your job and do it well counts as well, doesn't it? Yes, and there's no but to that. Mm. It does make it more attractive. Um, the issue comes, I suppose, where you build so high on the tech stack, we go yeah. back to being spoon-fed again, that mm. why do you want the salesperson? And if you're not, if you're building that tech stack, you really have to sharpen the salesperson yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, we all know about the information that goes into mm. this, and, is that, and you know, the information that comes out is only as good as that. Yeah. So it's very easy, we talk about bright lights and being attractive, it's very easy to get, but then from the employee's point of view, what do you do when you're there? Mm. Are they going to actually perform, pick up the phone and, and work? tirelessly through yeah. the day. Yeah. So it's it's like a double edged sword. Yes they need it and it's like any any shiny mm. things, isn't it? You what they're going to attract. Um, so you must have a tech stack, but at the same point, that culture's got to drive them to use it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously, what I'm, I'm delighted because SaaS companies are finally coming on board with our way of thinking for the last 10 years, which is that it's all about picking up the phone and talking yeah. to people. And I think SaaS companies went through a period of everything being digitalized and automated. Now they're coming back to actually the way to scale is being up the phone, outbound sales. Yeah. And it's, it's really nice to see companies seeing that as the route to, to, to market and to, to, to be their, their best op opportunity for scaling. We've seen some great companies out there, like the likes of Cognizant, um, who no doubt will, will appreciate the mention, scale really quickly. And most of what they've, um, most of their vehicle for scale is comes through outbound sales, which is brilliant. See, when we're talking about our offering, it's about outsourced SDRs because there are those challenges of hiring people, of keeping people, retaining people, but also the opportunity to benchmark with an outsourced provider. We're lucky enough to be in a different pool. So, you know, we've, we've, we've got the, the, the London space, but in Exeter, where our delivery team sits, we've got a different recruitment pool of SDRs, and that means that we're not competing with tech company A, B, and C for the same team of SDRs. But what do you see as the other key benefits to looking at a combined outsourced and in-house model when you're when you're growing an SDR team. Well, it's like it's it's showing benchmarks between uh, performance. You mm. want it to perform the best. Um, sorry, you want it to perform. Wait, I Yeah, you want it to perform as well as you can. But how do you know where your benchmarks are? How do you know if that member of staff is better than this one? Mm. Or whether um, outsourced is better than in you, you, yeah. you know as well as I do. When you have a business, your first one or two members of staff mm. is so crucial to you. Um, they are like a little family, so you yeah. almost over-mollycoddle your precious, mm. your, um, 
you're worried, well, we don't have that here. Yeah. We have, we have uh, benchmarks that have been set over the last yeah. two years. Yeah. But also, the guys in the teams here are used to working with different products. Mm. We're not bringing someone who's selling a, who was selling a CRM and then asking yeah. them to sell an intranet for someone. Mm. We are, they, they've, and they don't know quite where mm. they're doing. They're out of their network and out of their pool. The guys here have been selling anything from energy mm. products to SaaS to, um, to TRMs to mm. whatever, whatever they whatever they're selling at the moment. So they're well adverse in the yeah. art of selling yeah. uh, rather than just yeah. actually firing a certain product. Yeah, into agreed. And look, I think it's a great opportunity for SaaS companies to, to accelerate their growth. So you can hire SDRs so quickly, yeah. but actually if you layer that on and you've got another hiring strategy, albeit that's on an outsourced basis, then you can scale much faster, even if that's a temporary thing. Or indeed, it's a great opportunity to test new markets. So if you're going into new geographies or you're um, going into new verticals or whatever that might be, great opportunity rather than diverting your current team of SDRs or indeed having to hire new people to yeah. do that, great way to test it without that sort of massive commitment of hiring more people. So I've heard that being um, a really good fit for, for, for growing SaaS yeah. companies. At the and when we bring a new um, product or service on or a mm. client on, when they do the training or when we do the internal training, and that can be mock phone calls, mm. uh, that can be um, uh, tr live training, in yeah. we record it, right? So the teams, there could be four or five in a specific yeah. team, and then when the when it grows, mm. uh, people the new recruits can be trained by the team yeah. here, or watch the videos and all yeah. the recruitment training as well. So you don't have to continuously mm. stop a campaign to yeah. then start training yeah. anymore because the teams are already trained. Brilliant. Well, I think we're out of time. Thanks very that much. Went quickly. Cheers. Goodbye.